about are the different pathways, different types of reactions. I'm going to be very, very specific with what I expect you guys to know. Definitely pay attention, take some good notes, because I cannot be any more clear with what my expectations are you know, for this portion of the chapter. So this picture will help you tremendously. Knowing it inside and out, great. Yeah, so we'll put you in a really good place. So here, first off, we have aerobic respiration versus anaerobic versus fermentation. We need to know the differences between all of them. So first off, looking at aerobic respiration, we see aerobic, of course, is going to utilize oxygen. right here for all three of these main pathways for aerobic respiration for anaerobic and for fermentation you need to know who the final electron acceptor is you need to know the number of ATP that are generated and you need to know which reactions are included so let's start taking a look we look at aerobic respiration again it is called aerobic due to oxygen so if we look at it we see glycolysis if you look at glycolysis, it starts with glyco, ends with lysis. So we are basically splitting glucose. We are breaking glucose down. We are lysing glucose. Starting reactant is going to be glucose. And if you look at aerobic respiration, you see glycolysis. Let's just move over to anaerobic. It looks 100% identical because anaerobic respiration also starts off with glycolysis. And then if we move over to fermentation, look at that. 100% identical, it too starts off with glycolysis. Glycolysis is the first pathway, first reaction included with all three of these pathways. Okay, they all incorporate glycolysis. Does anybody remember how many carbons are in, are in glucose? Six. Six. C6, H12, O6. Okay, six carbons. Right here we can see glucose is going to get split into two pieces. Each, of, each piece has three carbons. There's a three carbon piece here, three carbon piece here. Anyone that has studied glycolysis before, do you know the name of that product? Pyruvate. Pyruvate, also known as pyruvic acid. So you absolutely need to know, with glycolysis, you start with glucose, and you end up with two molecules of pyruvate or pyruvic acid. Pyruvate or pyruvic acid. Pyruvate or pyruvic acid. We can also see that we generate some ATP. When you look at glycolysis across the board, we're generating a little bit of ATP. Great. All right, so now if we look at aerobic respiration, and we can see two ATPs are generated total from glycolysis. Okay, so we have two from glycolysis. Next up, looking at aerobic respiration, here's our next process, Krebs cycle. If we look at the Krebs cycle, we see it's called a cycle because it does spin around. The Krebs cycle, so if you listen to this, the Krebs cycle spins once per pyruvate that is made. Okay, so it spins once for each pyruvate. So how many times does the Krebs cycle spin per glucose? Twice. Mm -hmm. Twice. Okay. Is it two? Is it two ice? Yeah, like two twice. <laughs> twice. <laughs> okay. So one glucose splits into two pyruvate, so you're gonna have two spins per glucose, or you can say one per pyruvate. Either way you wanna look at it. What's interesting is we see the Krebs cycle with aerobic respiration. We see the Krebs cycle with anaerobic respiration, we do not. There's no Krebs cycle here. We do not see the Krebs cycle with fermentation. We see a lot of you know, NAD over here picking up hydrogens, FAD picking up hydrogens. We see some carbon dioxides being made, which with aerobic respiration, we know we're making 
some carbon dioxide, we're also making some water. We saw that as products before. Okay, so we can see a couple more ATPs from the Krebs cycle. Now if we look down here at the electron transport system, okay. this is aerobic respiration. With aerobic respiration, oxygen is your final electron acceptor. When you guys handed in your oxygen lab last week, oxygen acts as that final electron acceptor. Mm -hmm. Aerobic, yes. Zoom out. Okay. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor for aerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration, final electron acceptor, is a non-oxygen compound. Sulfate, nitrate, carbonate. Yes, you see that O in there for oxygen, but it's not just oxygen. Okay, so it's a different compound. It's an inorganic compound. Okay, non-oxygen, inorganic compound. Sulfate, nitrate, carbonate. Here's the thing. For fermentation, there is no Krebs cycle. There is no electron transport. You go straight from glycolysis right into fermentation. What is the product of glycolysis again? Pyruvate. Pyruvate. Your final electron acceptor for fermentation is pyruvate. It says organic compounds, it's going to be pyruvate or pyruvic acid. Three carbon compound, it's organic. So real quick, let's summarize our points up here. Okay, so first, final electron acceptor for aerobic respiration, what is it? Oxygen. Oxygen, aerobic respiration, oxygen. What is the final electron acceptor for anaerobic respiration? Non-oxygen compounds. Non-oxygen compounds such as sulfate, carbonate, nitrate. What is the final electron acceptor for fermentation? Pyruvate. Pyruvate, an organic compound. Reactions included aerobic respiration, anaerobic, and fermentation. We see glycolysis. We see Krebs cycle with aerobic and anaerobic. We also see electron transport with aerobic and anaerobic. Okay, so they're basically identical. The difference is oxygen, no oxygen. Fermentation, quite different because you have glycolysis and then you go right into fermentation. You do not have Krebs cycle, you do not have the electron transport system. Finally, the number of ATP that are made totally varies. Aerobic respiration, how many did we say again for eukaryotes? 36. 36, 36 for eukaryotes. What about prokaryotes? 38. 38. So if we go down here, aerobic respiration, 36 to 38 ATPs. Anaerobic, there's a wide range, 2 to 36 ATP. Bottom line, which is better, more efficient at making ATP? Aerobic. aerobic. If you look at fermentation, you have glycolysis, and how many do we make from glycolysis? Two. 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 And then you go into fermentation, which makes nothing with this step, so you end up with only two. Not efficient whatsoever. If you were an organism and all you could do was fermentation, you would have to consume basically 18 times as much food to make the same amount of energy, to yield the same amount of energy as an aerobic organism. Okay, so you need 18 times as much glucose just to make that same amount. Another thing, we need to take a look at products of fermentation too. So I can summarize that on the board for you as well. Here's my eraser. All right. Thank you. Okay, so with fermentation, let's move this over. Okay. Okay, so here's glucose. So 
let's just let's do it this way first before I show you that. Okay, so we're starting off with the sugar as our nutrient, right? And we're going to undergo fermentation. We're going to end up with acids or alcohol, and most commonly, gases. Acids, alcohol, gases. And those are our products. Okay, so this is looking at fermentation. It depends on what I put over the arrow. What the organism is. If it's yeast, yeast is going to do this. We're going to produce alcohol. If I were to use propioni bacteria, it's going to produce acids. If I were to use clostridium, it would produce a different type of an alcohol. Depending on the organism, E. coli would produce something different. So depending on the organism, you're getting different results. Okay, you use a different organism to make beer than you would to make nail polish remover. Okay, quite different result with that. You're looking at a different type of alcohol and nail polish remover compared to the alcohol in your beer or wine. It's all based on the organism used for fermentation. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to take glucose. We'll do this lab. Glucose is L. We'll do this lab on Tuesday. We're going to take sugar from grape juice. We are going to use yeast, specific kind of yeast that we'll use, and we are going to produce C2H5OH. So C2H5OH, which is ethanol, and CO2, which is carbon dioxide gas. We can balance it. I'm just going to put a couple big cues up here. It is incomplete oxidation of glucose. We're not completely breaking down the glucose. Incomplete. That's what this is that I brought into class. This is a little demo of the reaction that you'll do. You'll basically put grape juice in here, add some yeast. We'll cover it with a balloon. The balloon is going to trap the carbon dioxide gas. And you can clearly see there's fermentation going on in here. So we're turning this grape juice into a very raw, wine products. So if you were to take this off, you would smell some alcohol. You also smell a lot of latex from the balloon, you know, unfortunately. Balloon, as I mentioned, it does provide an anaerobic environment. It keeps the oxygen out. It also allows the CO2 to go somewhere. So this product will be pretty smooth compared to using a rubber stopper instead of a balloon. You would drive the gases, they'd stay in the product, and then you would have like a sparkling wine or you know, bubbly type of a product. Okay, so that's what we will do. So just kind of recap all of this. Okay, fermentation products. Acid, alcohol, gas. Again, dependent on the organism doing the fermentation. Fermentation happens in your gut oftentimes, especially those are lactose intolerant, consuming some lactose. The bacteria are going to ferment that lactose. Lots of gas builds up. Also, you know, a lot of acidic wastes that you would release when you did use the restroom because they would break it down into lactic acid, which is acidic. So it produces an acidic byproduct. So glycolysis only, right to fermentation. Organic compounds, like, what is the name of the organic compound again? Pyruvate. Pyruvate, final electron acceptor. ATP yields are small. How much ATP do we make per glucose? Mm -hmm. Two. Two. So you would need to do this, metabolize a lot of glucose to match aerobic respiration. Here's an example. So here we're just showing this fermentation portion, starting with glucose. Here we can see this is what a yeast would do. So we'll end up giving off some carbon dioxide, producing ethyl alcohol, ethanol. Okay, over here, we can see some types of bacteria. This also happens in human muscle, like with lactic acid, production of lactic acid. Some organisms have to undergo fermentation only. It's what they do. Yeast only grows via fermentation. Some are known as facultative anaerobes, as we know. E. coli. If you take away oxygen from E. coli, it is going to undergo fermentation. 
if you keep oxygen with E. coli, okay, it'll grow with aerobic respiration. So it's facultative either way. Just to kind of round this up, products of fermentation again, alcoholic, you can produce alcohols. As we can see right there. Types of alcohol varies depending on the organism. What we'll do in class is we'll produce that ethanol and carbon dioxide gas. Acidic fermentation, an example would be, you know, taking that pyruvate, taking that glucose, converting it to lactic acid. Mixed acid fermentation, some organisms produce a variety of acids. This table is not in your textbook. I just grabbed this table online. And it's really, really good because here you can see glucose. Okay, so getting broken down into pyruvic acid. This is glycolysis. Once you have that pyruvic acid, depending on the organism undergoing the fermentation, you can see what the products would be. Okay, so if you were to use propioni bacteria, okay, you would produce propionic acid and carbon dioxide gas which the acid is going to give the flavor to Swiss cheese. The gas is going to be the holes, of course, in the Swiss cheese. These organisms produce lactic acid. Saccharomyces is what's in here. Okay, so we'll use Saccharomyces on Tuesday, and then we'll produce the carbon dioxide gas, which is in the balloon, and the ethanol, which is the alcohol. And this product that's used for wine and beer. Clostridium, that was that stinky anaerobe that we used in the lab. So clostridium, you can make different alcohols, acetone, isopropanol. So, you know, if you were to look at alcohol swabs, you know, that's isopropanol. Okay, so this organism can produce that type of an alcohol. E. coli, acetobacter, can produce acetic acid, which you would see in, of course, vinegar. Okay, so different organisms producing different products, which is kind of cool. And then finally, our last concept check. All right, so if an enzyme is rendered inactive by temperature, pH, or chemicals, it has been what? Denatured. Denatured, removed from its natural state, okay? No longer functional in most cases. In blank enzyme inhibition, a regulatory molecule, the product, binds to a regulatory site. Non-competitive. That one was non-competitive. So no fighting going on with non-competitive. True or false, glycolysis requires oxygen. That, is, that one is false. Okay, glycolysis is an anaerobic process. It does not require oxygen. True or false, fermentative organisms grow more slowly than aerobic. We didn't necessarily talk about this in this capacity, but that is true. Okay, they go around more slowly. Okay, aerobic is much more important to be much more efficient. We produce much more ATP, of course, per glucose. And bacteria produce how many molecules of ATP per glucose? 30, 38. Okay, bacteria 38, and then eukaryotes? 36. 36. Remember, eukaryotes produce less. All right, that is it. The number two as far as ATP produced? Yeah. That would be resulting from fermentation. Um, this question specifically talks about aerobic respiration. Okay, so you might want to add that to the question, actually.